Good morning. Before I start to take uh, your questions, I wanted to take a moment to speak briefly again about our ongoing investigation into the unfortunate uh, death of Mr. Gray. From the onset of our investigation, I have repeatedly affirmed my support of an outside review. Whenever a police force conducts an internal investigation, there's always, there are always appropriate questions of transparency and impartiality. Police investigating, police should always have as much scrutiny as possible. My goal has always been to get the answers to the questions that many of us are still asking with regards to Mr. Gray's death. Any effort that adds to the transparency and builds community trust in this process is welcome. This outside review by the Department of Justice will assist us in getting to the bottom of what happened to Mr. Gray uh, in the most objective and uh, transparent way as possible. As many of you are aware, I've spoken to members of the congressional delegation as well as Governor Hogan over the past two days. We've discussed ways that we could bring outside independent review to this investigation. The Department of Justice review is a result of that process and I believe the federal involvement will help us to ensure that the community has confidence in the outcome of this investigation. In terms of the investigation itself, like all of you, uh, I wish uh, we knew more. Uh, there, there remain many unanswered questions, but I'm confident that Mr. Gray's family and our community will learn the truth about what happened. That'll open it up for questions. What are your thoughts um, on uh, President Young talking about um, an investigation of the department versus the review? Um, I didn't hear his comment, so I'm not sure what you're talking about. Could we get your reaction to the DOJ stepping in and launching the Yeah, that's investigation? so a second ago when I was talking about me being pleased about the Department of Justice, that's what I was talking about. Okay, not the review. I'm sorry. So with the, yesterday's news with the civil rights investigation, that's what I was talking okay. about when I said that I was pleased at their outside eyes. I think that it's um, just as I did when I inv invited them in for this collaborative review. Um, I think having uh, the civil rights investigation will help uh, give confidence to the work that we're doing around getting to the bottom of what happened. Uh, I think, again, you know, the police investigation, the state attorney's investigation, our commitment to have an independent panel coupled with the uh, DOJ investigation um, you know, I, I think it's important to have those layers of um, verification. Mayor, do you have any concern that there's too much emphasis on some of the police department about statistics, about number of arrests, number of uh, stops, number of um, uh, citations, things like that, that and, and that, that that atmosphere exists at all in the police department? No, I. You know, I think we have a healthy balance um, of making sure that uh, we're holding officers accountable uh, for, you know, doing the work um, while uh, they are on duty. Um, I think when I say a healthy balance, when you take a look at the progress that we're making, the progress that we're making in making Baltimore safer is being done at the same time arrests are going down. Um, I think if if there was a quota or some type of overemphasis on, um, you know, arrests or those types of numbers, we wouldn't see the the um, those statistics lay out in that way. Um, yeah, you know, I think there has to be some way uh, to uh, to verify or to give documentation that you're actually, you know, out there doing your work, um, you know, when you are on uh, on duty, but. Um, there's clearly uh, not an overemphasis on uh, those types of statistics. Madam Mayor, what, really you said you wish you had better information to be able to share with the community. To what degree does the Police Officers Bill of Rights influence that conversation? Because with the 10 day waiting of talking to supervisors and to investigators, it appears to me that a lot of information the city might not know because they're not talking. At the end of the day, we will get that information. Um, you know, I believe very firmly and make sure that we follow all of the, the 
the rules and the policies to make sure that while this investigation is thorough, we don't uh, ruin our opportunity uh, to hold accountable anyone who we deem at the end of this process needs to be held accountable. Um, you know, it's, it is, everyone has the right against self-incrimination. Um, you know, average citizens, regular citizens, as well as law enforcement uh, officers, and will operate uh, within those rules. Mayor, the um, story of Freddie Gray's um, handling by the Baltimore City Police Department and his death um, led the evening news, at least on our network, two nights in a row. Mm -hmm. It's on CNN, probably the dominant story on CNN still, till the baby's born, probably in the market, which will take over. But at um, any rate, what, what's your, are you, how concerned are you about that? This is a pretty nasty story about the Baltimore Police Department. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I think that's an interesting question. I guess for journalists, that sort of thing would be sort of the frame through which you look at it. Um, it's, it's not the, the story that's nasty, it's the incident. Um, we have uh, someone who, uh, before their interaction with the police, was uh, from all accounts walking down the street or, you know, even running. Uh, and within, it seems like an hour, uh, he's unresponsive, injured to the point uh, where he was, um, you know, within seven days he was dead. And the, my focus isn't that it's a bad story. My focus is that it's a bad incident and um, making sure that we get to the bottom of it and get uh, the answers that his family deserves as well as um, make sure that we do everything we can in this process um, to scrutinize how we did things. We've already started making changes. Uh, you know, the, the police commissioner was, um, you know, instructed uh, all of our officers about what to do when a person in custody requests medical attention. You know, that's an immediate step. But what, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking for, uh, you know, what are the other things that we're going to learn from this incident so something like this never happens again. You know, I don't, um, you know, I guess my media people care a little bit more about whether or not we're on the front page or we're the lead story on CNN. I'm, I'm focused on making this right for the family and for the community. Have you had a chance to speak with the family? I have attempted. Um, I had a meeting set up. It was declined by their council. Um, so I, I'm looking for other ways to reach out. What and troubles you are, most? I'm sorry. What troubles you most about this case? I mean, you said there are more questions out there. What is troubling you particularly about this case? I, I, there are a lot of things that trouble me. Um, we still don't know what the probable cause was for the arrest. Um, you know, we still don't know, while we know the, 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 what in the injury was that led to Mr. Gray's death, we don't know how um, he was injured. Um, I don't know why uh, someone with an injury that would leave him unresponsive, um, uh, I don't know how someone injured to that extent could have asked for medical attention from another human being and not um, and given medical attention. Those are some serious questions that really trouble me. Madam Mayor, obviously this is a side concern, but tourism and hospitality is a major part of our economy. Mm -hmm. When you have a story like this being covered by CNN 24-7 for an entire week, are you concerned that that reinforces negative stereotypes about the city that may enter our ability to attract Um, yeah, I, I'm really trying to figure out why you think at a time like this I'd be thinking about tourism and hospitality. I'll, I'll let you speculate on that. Madam Mayor, can you talk at all about the cameras? Uh, and Give me one second. This young man isn't familiar with how uh, aggressive you all around here, <laughs> sir. <laughs> The African American mayor of a majority black city, are you feeling uh, additional pressure to get to the bottom of this? I mean, yeah. is there a racial component here that, that puts you in a different position than, say, the leaders in Ferguson or other places where this kind of thing has gone on, where it's often a white leadership, a white police commissioner? Yeah, so I, 
I only know, you know, this work through the lens of an African-American woman uh, who grew up in Baltimore. So I don't know um, how it would be different or how I would approach it differently if I were any other uh, thing. I can say as someone who grew up in Baltimore, um, the reason why I do what I do is because I want to make our city work better for the communities that it serves. And um, that's why we've worked so hard with instituting reforms in the police department when, you know, I was, I mean, these people were here when we were able to get the homicide rate down to the under 200. Now, those of you who are from Baltimore know that um, that was something that people thought would never occur. Uh, and when it happened, you know, I was very, very uh, excited and optimistic. Uh, and when I went, you know, during that time when I would go to different community meetings, I expected to uh, experience some of that same optimism and excitement from uh, many of the communities who had been hit the hardest by the violence. Uh, what I received, uh, what I heard instead was while people were uh, pleased that there was some pos positive traction with respect to the, the number of homicides going down, they were mad as hell about the way that they were being treated by the police department. And, you know, that, and, and I knew that we had to, to do things differently. I looked at, and uh, we looked at the unit that was responsible for a lot of the excessive force and discourtesy complaints, and that unit was disbanded. Uh, the police commissioner had a thorough review of the department and uh, had a, has a, a bold list of reforms uh, planned, and we've been working through those reforms, including um, the way we train, uh, our officers, and um, we've been very aggressive with our outreach meeting on a, on a regular basis with uh, community groups because, um, you know, one of my colleagues in the, on the city council always says, you don't ask the, the doctor if the medicine is working, you ask the patient. We have to be in relationship and communication, and, and um, I know because of those efforts, uh, while we still have a long way to go, we've made progress. Uh, we have seen the number of lawsuits against this, uh, the uh, police department go down under my administration. We have seen the uh, discourtesy complaints go down, excessive force complaints go down. Um, we have been seeing progress. We also know um, that um, we have an obligation uh, when, something, when something happens, particularly something as tragic as this, you know, I can't lean on what we've done. I have to make sure we get this right today uh, so we can build on the, the, um, the, the progress that we've made because too many people, and not just too many people in government, I mean, the community has been an active part of this work and, and too many of them um, as well have worked too hard to, um, to, to get the progress that we've seen for us to slide back. Mayor, in, in past um, investigations, Tyrone Lewis, Anthony Anderson, mm -hmm. et cetera, uh, they resulted in no charges against police. And I'm not sure if they even resulted in any internal disciplinary actions. Um, in this case, it seems like the range has already been set in a pretty negative place, right? I mean, it's on the, on the one hand, they at least did not provide medical, the necessary medical care. And on the other hand, it could have been something much worse. Um, do you have any assurances to feel that some, something will change and something will be done as a result of this investigation in the, in the Freddie Ray's death? I, absolutely. I mean, we, and, in, any, in every one of those incidents that you talked about before, um, after Independent Eyes took a look at how we handled the case, there were recommendations, uh, even if there weren't criminal uh, charges brought, there, in, in each independent investigation, uh, that we've had um, under my watch as mayor, the, the panel has made suggestions and recommendations for how we can improve operations, and those things have been uh, implemented. I think it's premature to say what uh, will happen. I will say that those are the questions that I'm asking, uh, so we can make sure that something like this uh, never happens again. Madam Mayor, could you speak uh, just to the personnel that's supposed to be managing the cameras mm -hmm. near Gilmore Homes. Uh, I know 
know they were rotating. Um, it was my understanding that when uh, the monitor notices something unusual, they're supposed to take it out of that auto mode and um, focus on what's happening on the street. Mm -hmm. Any idea as to why that didn't happen in this case? No, I think it is. I think it's too early to say. Um, you know, I think there can be a lot of speculation. Um, but I've been to the watch center. I know that the uh, the people that we have in the watch center are trained professionals. Uh, I also know that they're looking at multiple cameras at a time. Um, they depend on what they can see themselves. Uh, and they also depend on uh, getting information uh, from the streets, uh, from the officers, as far as, you know, now we know we're going to train on this, on this camera. Um, the incident was very brief. Uh, you saw the, I'm, I'm pretty sure you saw what the, the camera uh, saw. And even when you see the arrest, there was nothing. Um, and again, I, I'm, not, I'm not trained in that way, but it didn't seem um, from what the camera caught, not from the other uh, angles, but what from the camera caught, um, that it would have, um, you know, arrests are made all day. You know, so it wasn't anything particularly um, different uh, about that um, from what I could see from the CCTV camera. So, I mean, we're taking a look at all of the, the procedures, but I, what I do know is that the, the people at the watch center are trained professionals that uh, have a very difficult uh, job. They're not just watching one camera um, because they know, okay, if I watch this one camera at you know, 845, something's going to happen. No, they, they're, they are balancing um, many things and um, as well as what they can see, as well as what they're hearing uh, from the streets. And uh, it is not unusual uh, that they wouldn't have, uh, you know, taken it off of, uh, you know, the auto mode. Um, you know, if the officers could catch everything that happens, uh, you know, with uh, in around a, a camera. Our closure rate would be a lot higher. You know, that we it, we can't catch everything. We do the best that we can to to be aggressive with our camera program to put the cameras in in the right places and to put the right people behind them. But they're with the cameras in place, with the right people behind them. There was still no expectation that 100% of the, the um, criminal activity would be caught on camera. It puts us in a better place than uh, when the, if just, we didn't have any cameras. Can I just get to follow up on that many camera issue? There, there are cameras at Mount and Baser, mm -hmm. which is a significant part of this timeline, mm -hmm. because that's what we can value in, mm -hmm. is shackled. There's no footage that we are aware of from, there's three cameras, according to the community. Three cameras on that. In fact, I've seen pictures of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Where's the footage from those cameras? So what I can say is we've been taking a look at all of the uh, reviewing, the department's been reviewing all of uh, the cameras that are anywhere in that vicinity. And as we find um, any uh, more uh, footage that uh, tells the story of what happened to Mr. Gray, um, as soon as we're able to release that, we will be releasing it. But as far as you know, those cameras were being manned. And working. I, what I'll say is, as soon as we're reviewing the cameras that were in the area uh, to find out if there's any inform any um, visual um, evidence uh, that would be helpful to the investigation, that would be helpful to illuminate what happened to Mr. Gray, and as we can, uh, as we find it, and as we can release it, we will immediately do that. To your knowledge, you I'm done? sure you you are like. <laughs> An astute uh, person, you under you understand what last question is. And that was like three last questions last ago. Question. Thanks, Luke. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.